All right, let's talk a little bit about rates of chemical reactions in terms of concentration. In general, these rates increase as concentrations increase. If we look at ammonium ion reacting with nitrite to produce nitrogen gas and water, look at that rate data at 25 degrees Celsius. What you can see between the two trials is that for between one and two, you can see that the concentration doubles for ammonium, but stays the same for nitrite. And then for three and four, the ammonium stays the same and the nitrite doubles. You need trials like that to determine what we call the reaction order. That is how the rate of the reaction varies if I change the concentration, because it doesn't always vary the same for a particular each individual reactant in a reaction or across reactions. So what we can look at is we can say that the ammonium doubles, nitrate stays the same, and the rate doubles. Here we can say the nitrite doubles, and here the rate also doubles. So we have more or less the same relationship here, but it's not always the same. So we got a doubling of the concentration with a doubling of the rate. And so if the ammonium doubles with the nitrate constant, the rate doubles. If the nitrate doubles with ammonium constant, the rate doubles. So we can include that the rate is somehow proportional to the ammonium and the nitrate ion concentrations. That's what this little symbol in the middle means, is proportional to. So the rate law can be written as the rate is equal to a constant K times the concentration of the ammonium times the concentration of the nitrite, where that K is called a rate constant. It's a constant proportionality that turns that proportion into an equality. In general, the rate law, the rate is equal to K times the concentration for reactant one raised to a power, which we'll call M, concentration reactant two raised to a power, which we we'll call N. And we'll say the reaction's nth order with, react, with respect to reactant one and nth order with respect to reactant two, so that the overall order is M plus M, M plus N, and then the Direction order can be the zeroth order if M and N are zero, which means the concentration doesn't impact the rate of the reaction, but usually it'll be a one or a two. So these values of the orders talk about how much the rate is going to change if I change the concentration. They have to be determined experimentally and they are not related to the stoichiometry necessarily. So as I mentioned, reactant can be zero at the order if the change in concentration produces no effect. That means that it's more or less independent. That's not extremely common, but it can happen in certain situations. The reaction is first order, that is the exponent would be a one if doubling the concentration causes the rate to double as it did in our previous example. Both those things were first order. In second order, if doubling the concentration produces a two squared or factor of four increase in the rate. In nth order, if doubling the concentration would produce a two to the n increase in the rate. Do you have to double the rate? Could you triple the rate or quadruple the, or quadruple the concentration? Sure, sure you could, but it's still gonna be that factor of what how, the factor you increase the concentration raised to the n power. And the rate constant is not dependent on the concentration though. So let's consider this reaction. Let's consider selenic acid reacting with six iodides plus four hydrogen ions produces selenium plus two I three minuses plus three waters. So the rate law would be given by the rate is equal to K times the concentration of the selenic acid raised to the X, iodide raised to the Y, hydrogen raised to the Z. Now in this case, 
x is one, y is three, z is two. So we would have to do what? Look at the coefficients and see that they don't match. And so it's not dependent upon the stoichiometry. And so the K depends on temperature and at zero, it's five times 10 to the negative fifth. So we wanna know what is the overall order of the reaction, which we should be able to get from that information. And then we wanna know what's the rate of the reaction if the selenic acid is two times 10 to the negative third, iodide is two times 10 to the negative second, and hydrogen is 1.0 times 10 to the negative two molar. And so then we'll, we'll focus on working that particular process. So we're gonna swap to the camera now and we'll work that problem. So we got H2SEO3 plus six I minus plus four H plus form selenium plus two I three minus plus three H2O. And we said the rate was equal to K concentration SEO3 raised to the X, iodine raised to the Y, H plus raised to the Z. So X was equal to one, Y is equal to three, Z, which I'll cross for, so it's not confused with the two, is equal to two. And then we said the K constant was equal to 5.0 times 10 to the negative fifth, liters to the minus fifth, or liters to the fifth, moles to the, over moles to the fifth, over seconds. And I'll explain those units here in a second. What's the overall rate of that reaction? So overall rate of that re order of that reaction is going to equal one plus three plus two, which is equal to six. And so that's easy enough, right? So that's one of our answers, the overall order of the reaction. Now, going back to our friend, the units, if I'm gonna get for units on the rate, moles per liter per second, I can't cancel them all out because the units on each of these is moles per liter. And so if I plug back in my numbers, I'd have moles per liter raised to the first power I'd have moles per liter raised to the third power and moles per liter raised to the second power. The net result of that would be moles to the sixth over liters to the sixth. So for my K constant to make it work out, it's got to be inverted, but one less than that. So it's gonna be liters to the fifth, moles to the fifth, and whatever your time unit is, seconds, minutes, hours, in our case, seconds. So that will cancel with all but one of those, and I get units of moles per liter per second. But so notice that the molarity in the units on the K is inverted and one less than the overall reaction order. And you'll need to remember that to get the units right. So now what we need to do is work part B. So our concentration of our H2SEO3 
is 2.0 times 10 to the negative third. The iodide is 2.0 times 10 to the negative second. And the H plus, and these are all molar concentrations, and the H plus is 1.0 times 10 to the negative second molar. And so I want to know the rate. So then the rate, if I plug in, it's going to equal our K from up here, 5.0 times 10 to the negative fifth, liters to the fifth, moles to the fifth seconds. And then we're going to plug and chug our numbers 2.0 times 10 to the negative third moles per liter. You'll see the units cancel a little better. 2.0 times 10 to the negative second moles per liter. And that's cubed. And then 1.0 times 10 to the negative second moles per liter squared. And then the rate is just going to be the result of all that going through the calculator. So we're going to take our 5 times 10 to the negative fifth times 2 times 10 to the negative third times 2 times 10 to the negative, negative second quantity cubed. times one, one times 10 to the negative second quantity squared. And the rate would be 8.0, keeping our sig figs, times 10 to the negative 17th moles per liter per second. So not very fast, but the reaction does in fact happen at a very slow rate. So if I go back and now share my screen again, we're gonna go down and we're gonna look at another problem. And so we wanna consider the, the reaction determined by this rate data. So we've got two NOs, plus two H2s going to form N2 gas plus two H2O gas. So everything's in the gas phase. Now let's look at the data more importantly. Experiment one, both concentrations are 0.1. The rate is 1.23 times in the negative third. And that's moles per liter per second. Now, if you look at reaction two, the NO stays the same, but the H2 doubles and the rate doubles. And then if you compare one and three, you can see the concentration doubles for the NO, but the H2 stays the same and the rate quadruples or goes up by a factor of four. So what can we conclude then? we can conclude that we're first order with respect to the hydrogen and we're second order, right? Because four is two squared with respect to the NO. And so that's actually part A. And so NO is second order and H2 is first order. And so that would be the answer to part A. And then we will write the rate law for the reaction. And then we're gonna determine the value for the rate constant K with the proper units. The rest of that we'll have to do on paper. So we're gonna stop that share and go back to our camera. So what's our rate law? The rate is gonna equal K, which we don't know yet. That's our rate constant. Concentration of NO, and it's second order. So we're gonna make that exponent a two. 
the H2 is first order. And so there'd be a one there, which is left to be implied. So that is my rate law. And so the last part asks me to determine the value of the K constant. So the K constant is equal to the rate divided by the concentration of NO squared concentration of H2. Now, I've got to pick one of the trials to plug in. Practically speaking, in the experimental range, we'd probably want to do a calculation like this for each trial and then average the result. Since this is more idealized bookwork data, we can do it for one trial, just pick one, and it should always be, it should be the same for this particular problem. And so we'll just pick the first trial. And so the rate from the table in the first trial, 1.23 times 10 to the negative third, and that was moles per liter per second. And then from that first trial, everything was 0.1 concentration. So 0 0.100 squared times 0 0.100. And then we're going to calculate that. And so we're going to say 1.23 times 10 to the negative third divided by essentially 0.1 cubed since it's 0.1 squared times 0.1 and we're going to get 1.23. Now both of these were molarity so the equivalent of the unit in here would be moles cubed per liter cubed in the denominator because this is moles per liter and you would square it moles per liter moles per liter cubed. So you're going to flip that and multiply sorry cubed and so, and it'll cancel. So it'll be liters squared per mole squared per second. And when you think about it, you know, this, the overall order is third for the reaction. These exponents are one less, just like I said, it would be.